We are learning more about a teenager's plans to commit a mass shooting right here in West Palm Beach over the weekend. Thanks to an internal investigation, those plans to shoot up a pride parade yesterday were uncovered. Our Stephanie Valderrama is joining us live in West Palm Beach with how investigators were able to piece all of this together. And Stephanie, we understand this was just in the nick of time. That's right, Jim. Police say the teen was in Canada when he made those threats on a social media platform known as Omegle. But police not taking any of this slightly immediately increased security at that Pride event on Clematis Street and then put out a bolo looking for their suspect. I'm proud to announce that the West Palm Beach Police Department was involved with an investigation yesterday where an arrest was made in Canada. This 17-year-old, who investigators have not named because he's a minor, is now sitting behind bars in Canada. The teen is accused of threatening to commit a mass shooting at the Pride Parade that happened on Sunday in downtown West Palm Beach. In the video, police say the teen claimed he lived in Palm Beach County and knew very specific details about the LGBTQ plus event. Investigators say the teen made the threat while live streaming on the platform Omegle and someone watching the stream tipped off law enforcement. However, tracking down the user and his exact location proved to be a challenge for law enforcement because of how the platform works. It doesn't require an account for activation and use. It's a live video streaming platform. It's a way for people to connect to each other randomly, so there's not much information. Investigators say the platform also doesn't record any of the live streams, and the suspect was using a neighbor's Wi-Fi at the time. Detectives could not say why the team made the threat about the Pride event in West Palm Beach, or if he has a history of making threats against the LGBTQ plus community. I can say during his statement that there's no remorse. I think his, his intentions were, were to commit a terrorist act, a hate crime. I think we might not have been the only one. Pride event organizers say they are thankful to law enforcement for their proactive and quick response. We are happy to say that everyone's well-being was the priority and everybody is safe. And we're very grateful for all of the assistance and all of the attention that was was given to us and keeping the LGBTQ community safe. Yeah, so it's unknown at this time if that teen has any connections here to Palm Beach County. And really, law enforcement also don't even know the status of his citizenship. But local investigators say he will be charged in Canada and here in the U.S., but still no word on when he would be extradited here to Palm Beach County. Reporting live in West Palm Beach, Stephanie Valderrama, CBS 12 News. Now, this threat comes after another violent weekend in America with a series of mass shootings, leaving at least 12 people dead. Two people were shot dead. Another was run over and 14 were injured early Sunday at a nightclub in Chattanooga, Tennessee. In Philadelphia, three were killed and 12 were injured in a shootout in the heart of the city. Three people were gunned down in, uh, in Michigan Sunday and there were mass shootings in Arizona. Georgia and South Carolina. There may have been two, there have been 246 mass shootings in America already this year, according to Gun Violence Archive, which def defines mass shooting as bullets hitting four or more people, regardless of whether any of them die. Well, the governor, Ron DeSantis, wanted to introduce in Tallahassee would have imposed major changes in our state universities. A leaked copy of that controversial bill, a draft of it anyway, is making waves tonight. Yeah, the governor's been outspoken about the college curriculum being one-sided and says professors need more checks and balances. Our Mike Magnoli is live in Palm Beach Gardens tonight with a look at what the governor wants to see. So first, we've got to tell you that this draft bill has been shelved. That means it's still a work in progress, and everything that we're talking about here isn't going to be happening uh, anytime soon. Nevertheless, professors all over Florida are aware there could be changes in the wind in their classrooms and when it comes to their job security. And one of the biggest sticking points is who has the final say about what professors are being hired? This 72-page document, an act on higher education, is ruffling feathers all over Florida's academic world. Obtained and published by a website called Seeking Rents, the new rules laid out in this proposed legislation are in lockstep with remarks Governor DeSantis has made over the past year. He says universities are full of liberal bias and need to be reformed. This part of the bill, powers and duties relating to personnel, would be a game changer if it ever passes. Right now, university presidents decide which professors to welcome to the faculty. But the governor wants hiring to be handled by the university boards of trustees. And many of those boards have members 
who are DeSantis' political appointees and allies. Robert, is this a good idea? The draft legislation that I've seen, I think, is a really bad idea. It represents the worst part of overreach. Robert Casanello is president of the United Faculty of Florida at the University of Central Florida. He says the governor is trying to micromanage universities, and he says if this bill was ever introduced, if it ever became law, the consequences would be dire. I think if this draft legislation became law, it would create chaos throughout the uh, state public university system. If I was someone in in a world where this draft was um, actual law and someone came to me and said, will you be on the board of trustees for this university? I would run away from that offer. There are about 13,000 full-time faculty members across Florida's 11 public universities. The governor's plans would affect all of them. And you may recall back in April, the governor signed a new law that means tenure will no longer be a sure thing. As for the subjects being taught in the universities, the classroom discussions, the governor is vocally frustrated about that too. Back in April, this survey was sent to university students and faculty all over Florida to explore intellectual freedom and viewpoint diversity. And the governor's draft bill includes a ban on critical race theory and strong language about honoring American history, respecting the Declaration of Independence. For some perspective on that, I spoke with John Carter. He graduated from FAU in 2020. He studied political science and government. In your opinion, are all voices welcome in the room on state university campuses? If I'm being honest with you, they're not. Uh, if, you know, it's sometimes being a conservative on campus, it was not easy uh, to, to have a voice. I had so many people walk up to me whenever I was wearing a college Republican shirt or something, and they would give me that secret thumbs up, like, hey, yeah, like, I like what you're doing. I'm like, join us. Oh, no, I couldn't. I, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to fail my class. I don't want to be judged by my friends. Like, I'm just trying to get through school. Uh, so love, love your work, but, you know, keep me out of it. And, and for so many people to you know, feel that way on campus, just that like their grades, that they're going to be ostracized for what they believe. Like that's, that's very concerning in, in today's day and age. We reached out to the governor's office for a comment on this story. Haven't heard back yet. CBS 12's Lily Ortiz continues our team coverage tonight where residents saw some of that nasty weather blow through the Treasure Coast. That includes St. Lucie and Martin County. She's joining us live over in Fort Pierce near the Lakewood Park community. Lily. Yeah, that's right, Jim. This is a community where many residents saw those clouds forming. And again, the National Weather Service confirmed that an EF0 tornado touched down here a little bit after 6 o'clock. As you heard, Michael mentioned winds up to at least uh, 65 miles an hour. And again, something many residents saw. They captured it on their phones. And throughout the night, CBS 12 News viewers have been sending us photos and videos of severe weather as warnings were issued. Take a look. Quarter inch size hail. Storms moving across Treasure Coast, frightening some residents. Holy A lightning strike narrowly missing this CBS 12 News viewer Ian Alville, living in the Rocky Point neighborhood in Stewart. And hours earlier, this video is from Rachel Patrick, yeah. capturing that strong thunderstorm moving through Indian River Estates as it entered northern St. Lucie County during a tornado warning around 6 o'clock this evening. You could see debris lifted and lightning flashing. And a few miles south in the Lakewood Park neighborhood in Fort Pierce, we spoke to a couple who captured this video of dark clouds forming in the western area of St. Lucie County over a field during the tornado warning. It was just lightning and thundering, so we walked out to see it, and then we saw some clouds rotating. It was really pretty cool. Lots of lightning, you could just feel it rumbling. You could just see the black storm clouds coming. I like to come out and watch them because it's, it's amazing what Mother Nature can do. Right before the National Weather Service issued a severe thunderstorm warning for all of Martin County around 8.30 tonight, we captured these ominous dark clouds as we were driving on I-95 near Palm City. We were heading north on the highway before a burst of heavy rain eventually hit us. So we're along Kings Highway and Andrea Road here near that Lakewood Park community. So uh, we're a few miles away from where this confirmed tornado touched down. And again, many residents saying that this happened in a field area in the rural part of the county and no significant damage reported so far.